Rovers are territorial and it's like one guy. Generally, if you see a lot in one area, it's usually just one guy. They don't like sharing their space. So you tell the difference between a gopher and a mole because mole has paddle feet. And all it does is just push the ground up like that. So you can see a mound with lots of clods and stuff. And it looks like it's just been pushed up from the bottom. Where gophers dig like a dog. And so the ground is going to be a lot powdery and a lot more broken up. The dirt is a lot more broken up. Okay, so this is a really good example because they're kind of horseshoe shaped. So you can see where the gopher actually went in and threw the dirt out behind them. So that's kind of what you're looking for is a horseshoe shape like that. So our goal is to try and find not, you don't place a trap inside where the mound is, but you try and put it between two mounds where there would be a tunnel. Then you put a trap on either side. So either way he goes, he's going to run into the trap. They also don't like open holes. Go, gophers, you know, as soon as a hole is open, they're going to come investigate. It's like leaving our door open. So they're going to come through and they're going to investigate that open door, and that's when you trap them. So generally, you can trap a gopher within about an hour. But instead of just digging randomly at this time of the year, the ground is starting to get really hard, take a long screwdriver put it in the ground and you press ugh, and you, what we're looking for is where the tunnel is. So you just kind of start poking around where the, whoa, and that's how you know there's a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's completely right where we're going to dig. So we're going to try to open up this hole. You can get <laughs> Jake is a great identifier of active gophers because he knows they're moving down there. He can feel them. I guess through his feet or smelling. And when he starts digging, I know I've got an active hole. This ground is sandy. So you can see where we've already uncovered one half of his hole. And so now we have to find out where it comes out the other side. And usually just by poking around we'll find that. So, we found two, two ways that he can go. He's going to either come from this direction under Jake, <laughs> through this way, and then he's going to go behind me through this way. So we're going to set a trap on either hole. First thing I'm going to do is open up the walls a little bit. If you make it too narrow, all he has to do is push it. He wants to close the door. He'll push the the dirt toward the end of the hole. If you make it too narrow, it's too easy for him and he won't even consider the trap. So we have two different sizes of traps. You have this little guy that's for really for moles and it's worthless because they never run into it. <laughs> that's the only way you can catch a mole is he just runs into it. So we're going to use that. This is a big guy. This is what we use for the gophers. So what we do is we Unhook it here so these prongs open, and then we hook that little bit over that prong. Pull this thing, everything is a thing because I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Pull that back and make sure that the end goes underneath that little hook there. Then you hold it down with one hand, make sure not get anywhere near there because if you lose, lose it, it, you will be in the trap. Then you turn this, turn it all the way until it catches onto that. And then very lightly lift this up so it's very close to the edge. When he runs into that, it does, and that's what gets the gopher. It's sad. <laughs> Hopefully my hole is big enough. I'm going to put it down in the hole and I'm going to try and make it turn that corner. So it's way back in there. And we take a flag. We always have this, I know Clay's got a name for it, but this little chain here. 
I'm going to stick it up up here. A couple of reasons why we do that. Number one, we always want to know where we set them, obviously, because they're we want to be able to get the gopher. But they're also not inexpensive, so we don't want them to disappear. If the gopher got caught but he wasn't killed, he'd just drag it back inside, and we don't want to lose the trap. So we try and do that so we know where they are and so we can retrieve the trap. Okay, when we finally catch this guy, which I know we will because it'll be within the hour, they'll check out this open door. They'll be caught in the trap and these two prongs will be in the gopher. So to release him, we don't wanna to have to drag him out of there. All we do is release this and then we just turn that little bail thing. It does open up and it just does that and it releases him out. We shake him back into the ground Use our knife to push him back down in the hole, cover it up with dust to dust. 